As you're well aware and as you've all been waiting for, today's episode is on demon flip characters. Now already I've received a good amount of scepticism around this idea, but if you hear me out I genuinely do think that these guys belong together and that this is their archetype. There are already multiple archetypes that you guys are familiar with that are defined by a singular move that they have. Trap characters, item throwers, parry characters, this all falls back on the idea of facilitation. Everything a trap character does is in service of putting down more traps. Everything item throwers do is in service of launching random nonsense over the screen, and everything a parry character does is in service of making parry a valid option. And that last part is the most pivotal reason that demon flippers exist. It's that demon flip doesn't really work if a character's pressure isn't entirely built around it. So let's explain why that is. For the uninitiated, demon flip is an Akuma specific move. It launches him slightly above head height and it has at least 3 follow ups, an air to ground throw, an overhead attack and, if he hits the ground, a low comes out. And in some incarnations he can also throw his air to ground Hadouken from Demon Flip or if Demon Flip goes past the opponent it will still do the low attack from behind, giving us 5 use cases for this move already. Sneaky thing is though, that while it might sound utterly deranged to give that much utility to just a single move, Every single one of these options is beaten by just a simple DP or anti-air, which would theoretically make this a useless move. Now clearly it isn't, and there's plenty of moves that can be DP'd reliably that are very strong regardless, but they have to be, at least in the moment they're used, unreactable. So for a demon flip it has to be obfuscated by something, that something being the mental stack. So demon flip is an aggressive move. I'm going to switch to using Kami's hooligan combination for example purposes just so you see how this idea transfers to other characters in newer fighting games. For this aggressive kind of mix up, the mental stack here is your aggression. For those who are unaware, human short term memory holds around 7 plus or minus 2 items all at once. Most characters don't have 7 always valid moves, so for a demon flipper this is supplemented with something like a dive kick and something like spiral arrow. Things like Spiral Arrow, Tatsu, etc will all have free valid ranges, much like Demon Flip does. And lastly, these moves are kept valid at all screen spacings and are in play at all times. While this is still on the lower end of things, the 5 minimum short term memory items will go down even further when we talk about focusing, which is the only way to improve your reaction time. 17 frames, or about 0.28 seconds, is when something is fully reactable, like you can see something's happening and go for blocking it without thinking specifically about that move. But if your goal has to be DPing something, you also have to account for, let's be generous and say 5 frames of inputting DP. Meaning that theoretically, to anti-air on reaction, a move needs to be 22 frames to reliably anti-air. For Kami, Fatal Leg Twister, the grab ender, is 30 frames. So clearly we have a problem. This move should never land against a good player, and yet it's the defining part of these characters' kit. So what gives? This is why these characters, almost without any exceptions, have a lot of valid options across the whole screen. Some are less scary than others, sure. Air Tatsu is unlikely to hit at the best of times, and a grounded Akuma Hadouken only really serves to prevent staying full screen or to stuff approaches. But at least a few of these options are scary enough for it to matter. Even in games with parries, Akuma's air projectile gives him a safe way to be up in your face, starting pressure all of a sudden. Spiral Arrow gives Kami a nasty knockdown from anywhere on the screen entirely out of nowhere, and it's on knockdown that these demon flip moves will shine. On hit, Spiral Arrow puts Kami at least at plus 26 frames, meaning her hooligan combination follow ups can be well on their way by the time your character stands up. Same thing goes for Akuma's iconically strong sweep or any version of Tatsu. Even the throw out of Demon Flip itself will lead to strong looping pressure, as is the case for these characters dive kicks too. While only some of them are going to give you a combo on hit, even just getting in on a character who has a DP from a weird and unexpected range suddenly gives you an upper hand and time to run your deadly strike throw game plan. Hell, a lot of beginner players have a really bad habit of punishing blocked dive kicks with throws which is something you can punish automatically with a buffered demon flip against someone respecting your plus frames. And a better opponent is going to know that a well spaced dive kick is around plus zero in advantage and resets to a neutral situation, and if they're respecting that and you have good spacing, you can immediately go for a fresh mix up 
fish for a knockdown and then start looping your pressure from there. This I think is largely why you don't see tons of these guys in anime fighters. Someone like Milia, who gets a simple lockdown tool that she can use to run into free mix-up scenarios, could never exist in a Street Fighter game. In fact, any tool mirroring this utility in Street Fighter will cost a full round worth of meter. Not that these kinds of characters don't exist in anime fighters, but just that it's important to think of Demon Flippers as the Street Fighter equivalent of an anime set play character, because at its heart, the strategy is the same. Your neutral as a Demon Flip character is all about just fishing for cheap knockdowns, and then suddenly you've become the scariest character in the game. World is your oyster, and you can grab, block, shimmy, demon flip, safe jump, etc. There are other aspects though that make these characters a bit funny to talk about how to play neutral with. You guys already have a good understanding, I hope, of fishing for cheap knockdowns and stuffing out approaches, but something that's an expert technique in fighting games is understanding air momentum. This is the jump arc in Street Fighter V. This is a sharp dive kick, and this is a heavy air tatsu. Notably, these don't just have different ranges and arcs, but different timings. This will go even further if you're accounting for things like Akuma's air projectile, three different demon flip ranges, three tatsu ranges, etc. These are all active all the time, and I think a fun thing to note here is that that makes this part of the screen technically all yours when you're playing these guys. I think this is another reason that air dashers, as anime fighters are sometimes called, don't tend to feature this kind of character. Your opponent tends to have valid ways to attack this part of the screen in an anime fighter, but in Street Fighter it's very rare and most of the time very impractical. And while obviously you do want to be aggressive and hog the space directly over your opponent as part of your win condition, in neutral, Demon Flipper's strong approach stuffing tools mean they spend a weird amount of time at a professional level respecting their opponent's territory and staying out of their half of the screen. But this is a good way for professionals to sniff out their opponent's rhythm and lastly find gaps in it to break their pace, which is why so many quote unquote random spiral arrows are going to land all the time in pro play. And lastly, having so many good air manoeuvres available makes these guys a bit of a Willem Dafoe staring upwards gif style situation to deal with on the ground. While theoretically you can deal with all of these options with just DPs, the timing and spacing of how you need to respond to all of these individual tools differs widely across them. Meaning, people can't just react to you jumping with the DP, and they need to see which follow up you're actually doing, which gives them less time, they need to focus harder, and it makes Demon Flip an even more valid option. And while these factors are in play, and you're not properly anti-airing these guys, you can have a very hard time getting them to respect your ground game and letting you run your offense, because they're going to be flying around, throwing air projectiles, landing on you, mixing you up, and then just running away as much as they like. And uh, speaking of running your offense, how about playing against these guys? Well, firstly, I'd say that you should try and minimize any and all risks that you take. Even something simple like dashing, whether backwards or forwards, can mean you can't block a sudden tatsu or spiral arrow, and then when you get knocked down, it means dealing with some of the strongest pressure in the game. So you have to play confidently but risk free, and that will open you up much more opportunities than you'd have drive rushing at them from half screen or trying to fish for counter hits with heavy attacks. Also, it's a very common folly against these guys at a very high level, thinking that you should just take the throw against them. Look, while it's very true that these guys can explode you on contact with way more damage than the basic throws do, this might just be the archetype that wins via throw loop in tournament most often. While they're actually in a pretty bad situation from the plus zero throw tech that's created if you actually call this behaviour out. While it's very dumb to try and jump out of the corner after this situation comes up, seriously, don't do it. If you know your responses to their reapproaches here, which is actually way simpler than it is mid-screen, you can quickly flip the game around entirely, since on defense, these guys are effectively just like Shoto's. Their backdash is a little bit faster, so you can be wary of having your own throw baited when you're pressuring them in the corner, but to compensate, they basically just have the old to DP or not DP conundrum on their mind. So the world is your oyster if they're out of meter, but if they have it, you can feel free to bait it or safe jump it and fish for your own win condition and you'll be fine. Most of the time anyway. And that's all for the Demon Flipper. 
Sorry for the wait guys, I came down extremely sick and it delayed the work for a bit, but I'm all better now and I'm right back on schedule. So coming up next should be the first Ability Archive episode on something I only covered a little bit in this video. Dive Kicks. I think it's a good idea for me to cover something relevant and something that is extremely strong for the first episode. And believe me, those things can be game defined. After which I'll put up polls for both the next episode of Archetype and Ability Archive. Speaking of which, if you want a part in voting, you can join my Patreon or YouTube memberships down below for a shout out or early access to the videos. Or you can support me without paying. It would mean the world and it would help my channel grow if you liked, subscribed and shared the video with a friend. That's gonna be all for this video, but until next time, stay safe.